Banks give you loans. Banks send you checkbooks you never use. Banks even text you when your account is overdrawn. Banks are so important that when they get into a mess, the government bails them out, unlike the rest of us. But did you know that the banks that exist today, maybe even the bank that you use, were built off the back of slavery? Empires of Dirt, a show about Europeans getting rich at the expense of everyone else. From 1619, 11 million African men, women and children were stolen from their homes and put to work on the sugar, tobacco and cotton plantations of America and the Caribbean. Their forced labour helped build Britain into a global superpower. And even after slave owning was abolished in Britain, the British taxpayers still paid £20 million. That's 40% of the national budget or £16.5 in today's money as compensation for slavery. No, not to the slaves. The money went to the owners. Not a single penny was given to those who had been enslaved. The amount borrowed was so huge that the debt wasn't paid off until 2015, which means that if you paid tax at any point before that, your money went towards compensating slave owners. All four of the UK's largest high street banks have been linked to the slave trade by way of these compensation payments for their loss of human property. Barclays Bank was founded out of a merger with a colonial bank that helped fund the British Empire, and several senior Barclays bankers were involved in the slave trade. Through HSBC's merger with Midland Bank, one of its first managers, George Pollard, received £230,000 of today's money from British taxpayers as compensation. In exchange, he gave up 134 enslaved people on the Caribbean island of Nevis in the 1830s. The president of Lloyds Bank, John White Cater, also received compensation for estates in Jamaica in 1835 and 27 former members of the Bank of England were linked to slavery in the 18th and 19th centuries, including 11 former governors. Even after Britain abolished the slave trade in 1807, we continued to profit off it. Bankers just pivoted to indirect means of making money from the exploitation and trafficking of human beings. The City of London provided the finance for slave traders all around the world, and loans were one way of making money. So a British bank would loan money to a US plantation owner to buy more slaves or agricultural equipment. If you think mortgages are secured against the land you own, think again. So-called plantation mortgages, where US slave owners would borrow money from British banks, were secured against the value of the slaves they owned, not their land. The Royal Bank of Scotland offered plantation mortgages. So did Barclays. These mortgages were then bundled into bonds and sold to investors all over the world. When the US slave owners made repayments, the people who owned those bonds made a small profit. The City of London has defined British wealth for hundreds of years. Money comes in and money goes out to countries all over the world. And our status as a global power rests on our financial institutions. But the labor that built many of these institutions was enslaved. Iconic buildings like the Guildhall in the heart of the city of London epitomize Britain's involvement with the slave trade. Between 1660 and 1690, 15 Lord Mayors of London were shareholders in the Royal Africa Company, which shipped more African slaves to the Americas than any other institution in the history of slavery. A statue of William Beckford Sr., twice Lord Mayor of London, still stands in the Guildhall to this day. Beckford grew rich off the toil of slaves he owned on 20,000 acres of land in Jamaica. The Royal Exchange was the heart of the City of London, where stocks were bought and traded from all over the world. It was funded by Sir William Garrett, who helped to develop the Moroccan slave trade in the 1500s. So the blood and toil of African slaves literally helped build the bricks of the City of London. Following the Black Lives Matter protests, the insurance company Lloyds of London agreed to pay reparations to black community groups for its involvement in the slave trade. Campaigners are calling on the banks to follow suit. So when you go to withdraw cash from an ATM, remember that it was your bank that was complicit all those years ago. Slavery built the financial institutions we use today.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.